Connecting the dots with ODRA. In the TJC Dental Hygiene Clinic, when we see a patient, we do a series of assessments to assess our patient's overall health, their gingival health, and their periodontal health. After assessing all of these assessments on each patient, at the very end, we do something that is called ODRA. What is ODRA and why do we do ODRA? We're evaluating our patient's risks. What a risk is, is something that causes harm to our patient, either it being causing periodontal disease, causing carious lesions, or causing oral pathology. Um, with these risks, we're gonna find interventions to improve or prevent the risk. What an intervention is, is something that we can do to benefit our patient. And overall, it's gonna help improve the health of our patients. Some risk factors could be periodontal disease risks, such as smoking tobacco, having family or personal history of periodontal disease, irregular dental care, having systemic diseases such as diabetes, immunosuppression from you know um, things like HIV or having AIDS, being 40 years old or older, improper, improper nutrients, having gingivitis or 25% or more bleeding on probing, poor plaque control, of course we know plaque causes periodontal disease. Calculus, we all know um, that calculus doesn't cause periodontal disease, but it's a risk factor because it harbors the bacteria from the plaque. Um, having three millimeters or more probing depths um, indicates a risk for periodontal disease, clinical recession or furcation involvement, functional habits such as clenching, grinding, um, oral piercings in the mouth, um, saliva quality and quantity, um, missing eight or more teeth and radiographic loss of crustal bone. Of course, that loss of crustal bone is a big sign and a big risk in um, the development of periodontal disease. Some other risk factors um, are caries risk, um, the formation of cavities, having poor oral hygiene. Um, it's important that we address this with our patients. Um, saliva quality and quantity, serosomia, serosomia having dry mouth, it, causing medications, um, we, whenever we're taking medical history, we need to make sure that we're discussing things such as xerostomia with our patients so that they know why they have dry mouth, what's causing it, and how can they make it better. Um, infrequent dental exams, cariogenic foods or snacks throughout the day. Between meals, people snack and they don't see a problem with it. Their first thought is, oh, it's healthy or um, it's, it doesn't have a lot of calories, but they're not thinking about it. That snack is changing the pH in their mouth or it's sticking in their teeth throughout the day. Poor restoration margins, such as overhanging margins on crowns or um, amalgam or composite fillings. The use of illicit drugs, um, suboptimal fluoride exposure. A lot of people either aren't getting their fluoride from their water, they're not using fluoride mouth rinse or toothpaste. It's important that we educate our patients on the importance of fluoride and explain what the difference is between a systemic and a topical fluoride. Having oral appliances such as a lingual retainer, um, exposed roots, and deep pits and fissures in the teeth. Of course, there are interventions we can do for all of these things to help prevent carious risks. Um, oral pathology risk, the, the risk of cancer. Um, tobacco use, um, a lot of people, um, especially on males, sometimes you'll find that they use tobacco. And a lot of times you're not going to get them to stop, but educating them on it and at least switching from side to side in their mouth is going to allow the tissues time to heal between use of more tobacco. So there's things like that, that you're not going to always make the patient stop using a substance, but you can help improve that and, and educate them on it. And alcohol use as well, it dries out the oral cavity. Leukoplakia and erythroplakia, that's something we need to keep an eye out for when we're doing our cancer screenings. Patients with HPV, of course, they're at an increased risk for oral pathology, and we need to educate them on that. Um, excessive sun exposure um, it does increase the risk of oral pathology because, you know, our, our head, neck, the back of our ears, a very sensitive area um, to UV exposure. History of oral cancer. Normally, if they've had it before, the chances of them having it again are high. Improper nutrients, we need to make sure we're educating our patients on if, um, making sure that they're eating proper amounts of fruits and vegetables, uh, providing their body with the building blocks and the nutrients it needs to build and break down tissues. 
um, being 55 or older increases the risk of oral pathology, soft tissue masses or ill fitting dentures, um, and cause tissue flaps that can lead to other issues. Cheek chewing, that's a big one, especially with stress or nervous habits. Um, recommending something like chewing xylitol gum can help with that and decrease salivary flow. One of the things you'll see throughout all three of these risks is having decreased or um, poor quality or quantity of saliva. It's important that we keep an eye out for that and we educate our patients on why keeping the oral cavity moist is so important. And you're probably thinking, that's a lot to think about and to keep up with throughout an appointment, but let's multitask throughout the appointment. Make the most of your time. If you're taking medical history, ask, are you brushing? Are you flossing? Um, or tell me about your oral hygiene routine at home. You don't have to specifically ask, how many times a day are you brushing? How many times a day are you flossing? Are you flossing? Because most of the time, they're going to tell you what they're doing. And if they don't tell you, most times they're not doing it. Um, you know, if your patient is taking a medication that causes their stomia, keep that in mind. So when you're identifying your risk factors, you already know they have the possibility of having dry mouth and you need to do something to keep it from happening in the future, making sure that you're educating them on water intake. Um, doing dental charting, also look at your gingival descriptors. Note the saliva quality and the quantity. So when you're doing something, make sure you're multitasking, make, make mental notes. And uh, um, feel free to ask questions throughout the appointment, like, do you have any family history of periodontal disease? Um, are you eating balanced meals? Tell me about how many fruits and vegetables you eat a day. What do you normally eat throughout the day? It's okay to keep conversation with your patient and just multitask. Um, by doing that, you don't actually have to sit down with them at the end and take the time to ask all of these questions because you've already done it throughout the rest of the appointment. So why is it important that we um, identify risk factors and create interventions for our patients? It helps improve our patient's oral, overall health, their oral health, and helps them meet the goals of where they want to be in their health standing. If the risks aren't identified, um, it increases our patient's risk for carious lesions, periodontal disease, and oral pathology. It puts them at risk of having poor oral hygiene, cancerous lesions, carious lesions, and periodontal disease. And as professionals and dental hygienists, we, this is our goal is to prevent to improve and to use these interventions to make our patients lives better. Addressing these risks shows that your patient that you care and it keeps your standard of care high. By asking open-ended questions to your patient and actually showing them that you're wanting to help them improve and explaining patient compliance for their treatments, it just shows them that you care and you're making that one-on-one -on -one relationship better. So I hope this helps with um, Odra and why it's so important. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Bye-bye.